Oh, do you know what? I've been, I've been working out lately. My daughter bought one of these weights machines, and I've been. Uh, does it show? Does it show, everybody? I mean, look, look at that. Hey, sun's out, guns out. <laughs> oh dear God, I'm losing it. I'm losing my mind. During the meanwhile, no, 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 no. Anyway, uh, it is uh, Dexter and me uh, back with yet more uh, Tech Tuesday techliciousness. And today, uh, this week's uh, Tech Tuesday, it is a good old fashioned during the meanwhile lens shootout. Like a whist. Right, that's enough of that. Earlier this year, and as you probably know, I bought a couple of cheap Chinese manual focus lenses, one of which was a 7 Artisans 25mm f1.8, around about 70 quid for a brand new f1.8 lens. That's crazy in anyone's book. And the performance of that lens is frankly miles, miles beyond uh, its price point. Anyway, I bought it because I couldn't get my hands on a lens that I really wanted, which was the second generation Fujifilm 27mm f2.8 pancake lens. Well, I could get one, but not for uh, a decent enough price. And I wanted a second generation one because I wanted the uh, numbered aperture ring and the, uh, the weather sealing. Anyway, I've now uh, acquired a, uh, a Fuji, well, bought <laughs> a Fuji uh, 27mm f2.8 second generation, so that's weather resistant, aperture ringed um, pancake lens. And uh, I figured, of course, uh, one of the first things I should do is pit it against uh, its predecessor, the 7 Artisans 25mm. I've made quite a lot of notes because uh, I don't want to forget anything as usual. And my memory ain't the greatest. Uh, I can't learn scripts. So I will be referring to my uh, laptop, which is down here, uh, to make sure that I do um, do cover anything, everything rather. Anyway, I'll just get, um, get the lenses down a second. Ah. 27s on the camera and uh, 25 is here. Uh, physically, the lenses are quite different. I mean, <laughs> the uh, the 7 Zans one is a more uh, traditional looking, you know, longer lens, if you like, whereas the uh, Fujifilm one is very much a pancake uh, lens with a much lower profile. Uh, both of them have got numbered aperture rings, although the one on the uh, Fuji is, hang on, see if you can hear this, that is probably the nicest aperture ring uh, on any of my, my Fuji lenses, uh, to be honest. Um, so the Fuji goes from uh, f2.8 to f16 in clicked one third stops, and the 7 Artisans one goes from uh, f1.8 to f16 again uh, but in a click free silent motion but the aperture ring is beautifully damped it's it's a lovely thing to use you're not going to accidentally um bump it off its setting because it is it is nice and firm the fuji also has a lockout uh on in the a position um you can access it straight away uh, but you have to press like a clutch then to get out of uh, that uh, A that A setting. Uh, both have got a tiny small um, front filter threads. I think it's 39 millimeters on the Fuji and 43 or 46 on the Seven Artisans. So you are going to need uh, like probably you know uh, adapters or step up rings if you want to use filters with them because they're not really um, standard sort of uh, standard sort of sizes both of them have lovely smooth um, 
manual focus rings. Uh, I would say the ring on the Seven Artisans is nicer to use and better because two things. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, the one in the Fuji is really, really thin, even though it does have like, you know, a sort of um, uh, a serrated edge to it uh, to make it easy to grip. Uh, the one on the Seven Artisans is much nicer to use and it's got this handy little um, attached uh, foot at least sticks on with double-sided tape so you know you can take it off if you don't want it on there uh, but i find that is uh, excellent in firstly uh, actually operating the manual focus string and secondly in differentiating it from you know the uh, the aperture collar they've both got uh, a full frame equivalent of around about 40 millimeters so ideal then for everyday walk around uh, documentary or you know street photography weight wise uh, the seven artisans <laughs> I'll do that again uh, comes in a fair chunk heavier than the uh, fujifilm lens uh, but they're both uh, they're both very very light and you won't even feel them on your camera to be honest uh, build quality wise they're both of all metal construction uh, but the Fuji does feel the nicer lens uh, in the hand but you would expect that given their respective prices I mean the Fuji new comes in at 390 400 pounds whereas this 70 to 75 uh, in use they both feel a about the same on your camera to be honest um, in my case this tiny Fujifilm uh, XE1 and they both make for like a really small lightweight uh, kit uh, Fujifilm has the advantage of being an autofocus lens whereas this is oh, he's done it again <laughs> I'll drop it I'll drop it soon whereas this is uh, a full manual but what the Fuji giveth in uh, manual focus, the Seven Artisans taketh away with its f1.8 uh, uh, bocalicious uh, largest aperture. Mind you, for street photography, you're probably going to be shooting uh, both of them at f8. <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, so that larger aperture or autofocus team really are. Uh, rendered largely redundant and insignificant the slim profile as I said on the Fuji uh, focus ring uh, does make it uh, harder to differentiate from the aperture ring and to actually uh, operate as I said the one on the uh, seven artisans is far easier and an absolute an absolute joy to use with this cheaper lens of course you've got no contacts between uh, the lens and the camera uh, so no uh, exif data no focus uh, distance scale um, so if that's important to you then obviously this lens is a non-starter but with all all of the above really is said and done uh, all that really matters is uh, the camera's image quality uh, so i took them both out uh, into my garden, uh, into uh, into Swansea, uh, to try them both out. Now I'm no uh, pixel peeper, uh, so looking at things like you know um, corner sharpness, vignetting, distortion, they, they don't really matter to me as long as the image looks nice. That's good enough for me. But if they do matter to you, here are some images uh, of my fence. Uh, shot at various uh, apertures with both lenses uh, focus on the center of the image so you can uh, judge things like vignetting and corner sharpness for yourself so um, here are those really really uh, quite interesting images <laughs>
interesting thing I did find though was that in the uh, identical uh, bright light situations at f16 the Fuji uh, metered an exposure of uh, 1 160th of a second while the 7 Artisan uh, metered at 1 250th uh, which suggests that this lens the cheaper lens is letting in more light than its f16 would suggest so there's possibly a quality control or you know, model you know in model variant uh, issue issue right there what i will do is uh, as usual i'll pop up a montage of images at the end of this video uh, so you can um, you know you can pause them and have a, have a look uh, a longer look at them uh, for yourself and all of those images, uh, they're straight out of the camera, uh, uh, raw ones, uh, only cropped and converted to JPEG for, you know, for, for YouTube, obviously. So, which one of these should you buy? Well, obviously, it's going to come down to, firstly, your budget and, second, your uh, requirements. Don't let the bargain basement price of this put you off, though. It's a solid, lovely little, well-bit lens that performs really well. So if you don't mind um, manual focusing, uh, a lack of any uh, EXIF data uh, in your image files and uh, possible uh, in model quality control and variance issues, and you want a label snob, then go right ahead and, uh, and get this lens. Uh, there really is nothing wrong with it. I've shot a load of images with it and I would quite happily continue to use it alongside uh, alongside my Fujifilm but if things like autofocus weather sealing exif data a clicking aperture collar uh, and a name are important to you then you have to get the Fuji uh, it, it does also give you the smaller and lighter uh, overall package over the the seven uh, artisan's lens but as i said that does come at a slight cost and that is this sort of tiny slim profile of the uh, manual focus ring personally i prefer the fujifilm uh, but that's really down to the fact that my eyes aren't what they used to be and uh, focus peaking on the xe one uh, which i use both these lenses on uh, isn't the best uh, so I'm kind of reliant on autofocus a lot more than I'd like to be to be honest but overall it's also the the smaller package uh, it's got that that gorgeous aperture collar <laughs> yes I am that shallow and of course the Fujifilm uh, name behind it uh, and that, that really makes the Fuji the choice for me but on any of the XE cameras, so XE 1, 2, 3 or 4, with either of these lenses, you've got a tiny kit that's going to look really good and really cool, to be honest, on any of them. You're going to have that old rangefinder camera look or, you know, the Fuji X100, you know, what's the latest one, V is it, uh, type of look. And both of them will give you really good image quality and they are perfect for a stealthy walk around everyday street documentary you know taking snaps of the family type combination both of them absolutely fine buy either you know you'll be you'll be, uh, you'll be happy um, whatever but a lot poorer if you uh, if you buy <laughs> if you buy the fujifilm one uh, even second to hand the prices are they're not cheap um uh, but you know I, I wanted one of these lenses purely to put on this camera to give me le like a really small kit that I could shove in a jacket pocket or a bag and uh, that's what this now really uh, really gives me and I could not be happier uh, with it I take it everywhere I go um, I take this lens as well and I've got uh, another one I got a Mica um, where is it I've got the Mica 50mm, that's really nice. I've got the Fujifilm 35, and all of these or any of these lenses uh, look and feel great on, uh, on this XE1 camera. Um, yeah, anyway, 
actually I'm now start uh, no I'm not going to juggle with them um yeah so uh, that's it uh from Dexter to me for this week's episode of Tech Tuesday uh thank you so so much for watching we really do appreciate all the views comments likes interaction with the videos that that, that we do get and uh yeah uh the subscriber count seems to be uh some seems to be rising i'm over 1200 now <laughs> which is uh quite uh quite surprising now, i know some channels gain 1200 subscribers in an hour but um this uh this this isn't this isn't one of them and i'm quite glad i, I as i said before, before i really like having a small friendly intimate channel where i can you know chat with uh with all and any of you as long as your comments are you know uh decent and uh, not inflammatory in any way um then uh, then you'll get a response from me right that is it so stay safe stay well look after yourselves your loved ones and uh look after your little lenses as well give them to your pets to look after for you Dex. <laughs> maybe not and uh, though he probably wouldn't juggle with them, to be honest, would he? Uh, yeah, so um, be nice. Be a nice person. Leave a nice comment below. And uh, we'll see you all uh, on Saturday. There you go. Oh, actually, um, no. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you on Saturday. Sorry, forgot about something else then. Idiot. Right, okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> And then we slug idea on tea. As revi I tirion o me vanoi. He breed or sfung well at tea. Pale my ruin o thar de weather. Fedlon fall, pale my sign. The area I melis, fin denning halon al de ol. Pape sa unesim o me vanoi. I hei di guk de duiris ha. I chwar a'r oedd y tom y fanoi A san a'i eir a'r serch dy fardd Wyt eiddo i'n drwy gwyr a mod A'i gormod cadws a'r i mi Ni cheis i a fe Slow my vanoi, he piled a galon good a he. My vanoi boyed a horse of forward, done hail when this glare can all deed. A boy, dear Rossin, goody dog, yeah.